Hey Agility Enthusiast, I'm Lisa Seltover, your dog agility expert, and today I'm going to bring you a comprehensive introduction to dog agility. So if you've ever wanted to get started in dog agility or you just want to learn a little bit more about it, you are definitely in the right place. But before I get started, I want to find out what brought you into the dog agility world. Go ahead and put your answers in the comments below. All right, so let's talk about the history of dog agility and of course, what dog agility is. Dog agility is a dynamic dog sport where you guide your dog through a timed obstacle course. Originating in Crufts in 1978, dog agility has gone from an entertaining halftime show to an absolute beloved global phenomenon. It's not just a sport, it's a fun way to bond challenge and to spend time with your dog. Let's talk about how agility works. There are five main points that you need to know about. First, there's the team composition. Each team is made up of one dog and one human. By the way, they call the human a handler because they're handling their dog through the course. Next is the course completion and it's the team's job to complete all of the obstacles on the course. First in numerical order, next correctly, then under time, and without incurring any faults. Faults are assessed for several things, including when the dog takes a wrong course, they knock a bar, an obstacle criteria isn't completed correctly, and several other things. Next, you have to understand about guidance. That's where the handler helps their dog around the course. They can use voice commands, hand signals, and other body language, such as the direction that they're facing. When guiding your dog around the course, you're also going to want to remember and keep in mind the timing, the accuracy, and the speed that you're moving through that course. Let's talk about the benefits of participating in dog agility. For dogs, it's the physical fitness, the mental sharpness, and of course, the confidence building that comes with it. Dog agility can also alleviate behaviors linked to boredom and excessive energy. For handlers, there's the joy of a shared achievement with your dog, improved communication, and a sense of community among dog agility enthusiasts, who by the way, are the absolute best. So let's talk about who can participate and start dog agility. Any dog, regardless of breed or size, can enjoy dog agility. And by the way, that also includes mixed breeds. All a dog needs is to be physically fit, a positive attitude, and basic obedience. To participate in agility, handlers on the other hand need patience, positive reinforcement, and an enthusiasm for learning and training their dog. All right, let's go ahead and do an introduction of the most common types of dog agility equipment. They could be weave poles, jumps, contact obstacles, which include the dog walk, A-frame, and teeter. Some organizations have a tire, tunnels. Here's a sneak peek at a couple of dogs doing some obstacles. First, we got some jumps. Now we've got a dog going through the tire, and here is the A-frame. And we've got a dog going through both the tunnel and then over a jump. And of course, now we're gonna move on to my favorite obstacle, the weed pulse. It is so impressive when a dog does these. Beyond the equipment, there are four things you really want to know and focus on before you even think about tackling the equipment with your dogs. The first one is concept of positive reinforcement. And that's not just about going into it with a happy attitude. Positive reinforcement is a whole behavior technique. And once you understand that, it really will make your training much, much easier with your dog. Positive reinforcement is key for both motivating and rewarding your dog during training. Next, it's really important to understand the concepts of criteria and skill-based training. You want to be sure that you are very clear what you want to train your dog, not just the outcome, but the steps that are going to get them to that outcome. Once you have an idea of what criteria you want 
and you understand how skills are developed, it's going to make things much easier for you as well. That's why we often say to people, start with real simple commands like teaching your dog to sit, stay, and come on command. You want your dog to be able to do those things independently without your prompting or helping. And so by working on those skills and also bringing in the use of criteria, positive reinforcement, and skills-based training, you're practicing those skills on something that's much simpler than a piece of equipment. Next, understanding about gradual progression. So in dog agility, you really want to break these large skills into much smaller steps that build up to the large product that you want. Learning about gradual progression so that you can break them down helps so that you and your dog can be successful in tiny incremental steps. Something else to keep in mind with dog agility is you really want quality over quantity. Where that comes into play is, I'm gonna tell you a little secret that I do, I call it micro training. And what it means is I will train my dog for one minute at a time, and then I will go and I'll play with my dog for a bit, and I'll continue to repeat that process. There are a few reasons why I do it that way. Number one, you want to avoid something called diminishing returns. That's where, say for example, both you and your dog are either mentally or physically tired and you're not giving that full effort forward. You want to make it so that your dog is always giving a full effort so that you can reward a full effort. The moment your dog learns that they can give half an effort and still receive the same reward, they will learn rather quickly to give you half the effort. This comes into play, especially if you're teaching your dog speed. If you want speed, you don't want to reward for half speed. So again, this is where understanding criteria, skill-based training, and positive reward, understanding what you're rewarding really comes in handy. So you're also gonna keep that micro training in play. The other reason you want to focus on the micro training besides the diminishing returns and focusing on quality over quantity is it helps to break those steps down. When you come into training saying, I'm going to work on this step in one minute, you may find that you're going to be breaking it down into even smaller steps. And that's a good thing because remember, steps and rewards build to much larger accomplishments. Lastly, take the time to learn how to play with your dog. For me, that was a strange concept. I had to learn how to play with my dog games. So for example, tug and chase. That may not seem natural to you. Take time to do that. Remember, you as the handler, you're going to be training your dog new skills. And at the same time, you yourself are learning new skills. As the teacher, the handler, you have to speak your dog's language. Your dog doesn't understand English, so you have to make things nice and simple and that positive reward play really does wonders in accomplishing that. It bridges that communication gap. That leads me into the next piece, getting started with training. Before even looking into classes, I highly suggest that you begin training at home. And here's why. Number one, you may have to learn how to play with your dog. Number two, you really want to do this in an environment where you're not feeling like everybody in the class atmosphere is looking at you. And again, as I mentioned, it's not necessarily about the equipment, it's about actually the skill base and the foundations that you can set so that you can begin to start working with your dog. So there are lots of skills that you can begin at home without equipment. I'm gonna share a couple of those with you now. All right, so in this video, I'm using a regular dining room chair 
to make it look like it's a tunnel. And so basically I'm having my dog go through this smaller space. This is a great way to begin tunnel training that you can easily do at home. So why am I doing this? Well, oftentimes tunnel, tunnels can be dark and scary. By making it an open concept chair that the dog doesn't feel like they're confined in, I'm setting my dog up for success and I'm training them one step at a time. And look how happy he is. All right, so I've given you some ideas, but I want to give you another option. Join an online agility group. And here's why. You want to join with a professional, but you also want the support of a community. Those of us that have come before you are going to be able to let you know that's normal activity and how to solve those mistakes, but also to recognize the things that you're doing well that you may not yet even know that you're doing well. Tips and other support, I'll go ahead and put a link so that you have some other online resources to go to that are specifically titled Start Dog Agility. Stepping into the world of dog agility is definitely a thrilling adventure. And remember, Every agility star started exactly where you are right now. Whether you're aiming for competition glory or you just want a fun thing to do with your dog, believe me, the possibilities are endless when it comes to dog agility. If you're enjoying what you're seeing and you wanna continue, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you can see more of the videos. I wanna know what questions you have. Again, make sure you check out the resources page. I've got several links for you and I cannot wait to have you get started in agility. Until next time, continue on with your agility journey and I'll see you on the course.